In cryonics, we use cryoprotectants, essentially a medical grade antifreeze. Cryoprotectant solutions are administered through the circulatory system of the patient so that cryoprotectant enters almost every cell of the body. This process is done near a temperature of zero degrees C, or a little above, over several hours, during which the cryoprotectant concentration slowly rises to more than eight molar, that is greater than 50%. In organ banking research, isolated organs are subjected to similar protocols. Amazingly, living cells can survive replacement of more than 50% of the water inside them with other molecules, if introduction and removal is done at a low temperature. When tissue is slowly cooled, ice first forms between cells. The growing ice crystals increase the concentration of solutes in the remaining liquid around them, causing osmotic dehydration of cells. If cryoprotectants are present, the freezing point of the unfrozen solution drops sooner and faster, limiting the total amount of ice that forms. As the temperature drops below minus 40 degrees C, the cryoprotectant concentration becomes so high in the remaining unfrozen solution that ice stops growing. Cells survive suspended in the residual unfrozen liquid between ice crystals. As the temperature drops below about minus 100 degrees C, this unfrozen solution containing the cells becomes a glassy solid. What if you start with a cryoprotectant concentration that is so high to begin with that ice never forms at all? That is known as vitrification. The combination of rapid cooling and high cryoprotectant concentration to completely eliminate ice formation was first suggested in a 1984 paper. Embryos, ova, skin, pancreatic islets, blood cells, blood vessels, and other tissues have since been successfully vitrified. A whole rabbit kidney has been vitrified at minus 135 degrees C and successfully transplanted with long-term survival. Vitrification is now widely regarded as the most promising approach for long-term banking of large organs. Whether tissues are preserved by vitrification or freezing, cells end up in an unfrozen cryoprotectant solution. This solution becomes more and more viscous or syrupy with cooling until a temperature called the glass transition temperature is reached. At this temperature, the viscosity rises dramatically and the solution becomes a glassy solid, locking all molecules into place. The glass transition temperature is near minus 120 degrees C for typical organ vitrification solutions. Above this temperature, chemical reactions can still slowly occur. Below this temperature, translational molecular motion is stopped and chemistry can no longer happen. Biological time is stopped. To vitrify an organ as large as the brain, alcohol must expose tissue to higher concentrations of cryoprotectant for longer periods of time than are used in conventional organ and tissue banking research. The result of this exposure is biochemical toxicity that prevents spontaneous recovery of cell function. In essence, Alcohol is trading cell viability by current criteria in exchange for excellent structural preservation achievable with vitrification. The nature of the injury caused by cryoprotectant exposure is currently unknown. We are hopeful that it is a relatively minor injury given that our solution compositions and exposure times are not radically different from the compositions and exposures known to permit complete functional recovery of kidneys in published research. I'm Max Moore. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it interesting, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our website, and consider becoming an associate member.